organization. One of uh, our colleagues in, in University of New Jersey, uh, Richard, he, uh, he gave uh, such uh, comments in uh, Sunday 2008. Crystal growth is the heart of materials processing. So uh, crystal growth and also crystal uh, nucleation, very important for us, for particular for materials scientists. For material scientists, uh, often we have a lot of uh, option for the long scale. Uh, for example, from uh, the uh, atomic scale to uh, like a human uh, head uh, long scale. Anyway, a lot of option of uh, scale. And also we can uh, uh, get a lot of experience or knowledge from a different system and also a different skills. Uh, for example, in our state key laboratory, we can grow large single crystal like potassium hydrogen by hydrogen phosphate single crystal up to tons of weight. So very big single crystal. So in this case, it's a typical multi scale from molecular scale to the very big large scale of single crystal. So it's the origin of crystallization. So it's a multi scale viewpoint or multi scale process. So in this talk, I will mention uh, some about uh, uh, atomic scale, like a chemical bonding, and also aggregation, like a colloidal state, and also a big size single crystal. For the bigger size single crystal in my laboratory, for my group, we use a pulling growth technology, like a micro pulling down, and also chocolate pulling up. We can grow uh, the diameter of a single crystal from a two millimeter to uh, 100 millimeter in diameter, in diameter. So different kind of uh, products. So for our understanding, we agree with our colleagues in the uh, community. So for the, uh, for the understanding of the whole uh, materials processing, like uh, complex uh, of atoms or molecules, uh, that means that from nucleation to crystal growth or aggregation, and such a uh, all phenomena of uh, materials processing. Uh, when we look at uh, the chips free energy, it decreases um, de discontinuing. So we, that means we give a lot of uh, conditions to study a different uh, scale uh, performance. So in our study, uh, we are very lucky. We find uh, from uh, the atomic and or molecule to bigger single crystal. Uh, it's a, a function of a uh, scale, like a sub nanometer to centimeter. Uh, and we also find that it's a wave change of such curves. Uh, that means uh, different uh, regions or different uh, uh, long scales. And also, we are lucky we find uh, like a dimer trimer aggregation or, or cluster of uh, component uh, molecules or atoms. Uh, this gives us a lot of uh, knowledge about uh, nucleation. So nucleation process gives us uh, uh, a lot of uh, information to tune or the change in materials performance. Also, for the understanding why crystallization. So for the uh, multi-scale understanding, uh, we can find if we change the uh, atom numbers, like two atoms, five atoms, or 20 atoms, or even large number of atoms, and we can find, we can change their physical property from uh, insulators to semiconductors and the metals. So that means we can have a uh, 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 engineering of our uh, materials system. So it's um, very interesting. Uh, we can use uh, some dynamic or kinetic control of a crystal growth system to have uh, such a multi-scale selection of uh, materials. For the crystallization, often uh, if we look at uh, such, a, uh, such a study, such a topic from the material science and the engineer, and we can find that it's a, it's a multi-scale control uh, process of a material system. Uh, often the ions or uh, atoms or molecules, they come together uh, by the driving force of electronegativity. And they, uh, we can have uh, chemical bonds. Uh, so we have uh, the aggregation or uh, clusters or amphorous state of uh, 
interested of uh, our system. And uh, finally, we have uh, symmetry selection and uh, such uh, symmetry selection, we have uh, such uh, energy uh, barrier if we overcome such a barrier. And we can realize, we can obtain such a symmetry change. Uh, finally, we can have a crystal. Uh, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, electronegativity uh, driving force, uh, we uh, create ionic electronegativity skill to have a quantity uh, uh, skill for, for us to understand uh, the uh, cation behavior during crystallization. Uh, so, this is, uh, this is uh, an advanced material uh, based on uh, Linus Pauling's uh, uh, atom electronegativity skill. And also we provide uh, such a skill uh, for uh, different cations with the coordination number from 2 to, 20, to 12, and also a different uh, valence. Uh, anyway, very uh, good table in this paper. So. Uh, people can uh, come to this paper to find more details for, about this. So for this case, uh, we can find from uh, the, uh, uh, each cation and also uh, clusters to the whole crystal. So it's a typical multi-scale. Uh, so electronegative, uh, ionic electronegativity skill give us such an uh, understanding of atomic packing in the crystallographic frame. So we can understand uh, why they locate in different locations, now how about their ability, and now whether we can substitute uh, different uh, cations if we use uh, uh, guest ions to, to replace the host, uh, whether the possibility of all their locations. So ionic electronegativity skill can give us a lot of uh, uh, important help in this case. And also for the crystallization, particularly from the melt or solution to the single crystal. And we can find that they have uh, different clusters. Also, we can have imagination and we they have a dimer, trimer, or different, uh, different composition of uh, constituent ions or uh, molecules. And also for the single crystal growth, often we have uh, such a growing interface. Such a cluster will come to such an interface to grow, uh, attach on the uh, growing interface, so we can have uh, crystal growth. Anyway, for the melt or solution, they have a different uh, kind of uh, cluster or different uh, kind of skills in the in the solution. Uh, luckily, we uh, in our group we uh, select uh, in situ Raman spectroscopy to study uh, the nucleation. Uh, process. Uh, we, use, uh, we select uh, Euro as an uh, example because this, uh, this molecule has uh, a stiff uh, architecture, so such a stiff form. So such a molecule uh, has uh, quite a weak uh, interaction, so it's important for, for us to, to have uh, some information of their molecule, molecular interaction or their chemical bondings between uh, molecules during crystallization. So this is a typical uh, Laman spectroscopy of uh, your uh, small scale uh, crystal or powders we call it. So different uh, bending scale, uh, symmetry stretching uh, modes. Uh, anyway, this is the typical signal when we uh, use a Raman spectroscopy to, to uh, identify such molecules. And also for the Euro solution, uh, urine plus water um, in such a system, and they are typical, they have some typical changes. So we can use uh, the literature information to help us to understand uh, the in situ Raman or fire infrared uh, spectroscopy behavior. So this is a Raman shift, and this is a infrared uh, spectroscopy. So such changes can be uh, related to the uh, molecular molecular interaction and also uh, the aggregation of, uh, of uh, molecules and also the symmetry change because the uh, Raman spectra and also uh, infrared spectra give us a symmetry change signal uh, of molecules. So and also we from these changes and we can find uh, the uh, interaction between uh, molecules and also the bond formation. The signal can help us to identify the whole process. 
So, for example, for the Raman shift here, uh, often in the water solution, such a UR molecule uh, has an interaction with uh, water molecules. So, such a behavior we can find uh, such a signal give us uh, such a, a state uh, with time increasing. So, such in situ patterns uh, shows us uh, some combination or some uh, peaks uh, disappear. Um, your, your molecule will come together to have interaction. So the uh, typical uh, signal will be uh, appeared. So in this case, we can, um, we can uh, find uh, the uh, nucleation uh, process finished and crystal growth start. So it's a uh, very useful uh, signal identification. And also if we use uh, infrared spectroscopy, and here we can find uh, uh, also some uh, signals, some peaks uh, shift uh, and also disappear, and then we can find the uh, uh, your interaction start, and also some bound uh, start uh, to uh, form. So we, uh, it's uh, such a signal changes or peak changes uh, can give us uh, your your molecular interactions and also such an interaction is uh, also a kind of a chemical bonding process. So such a such a bonding behavior. And uh, also for if we go to a more complex uh, system like uh, ammonium dihydrogen phosphate single crystal. So during such a gross um, process uh, in the gross system, and we also uh, can uh, imagine, we can, uh, we also can find uh, such uh, clusters, different uh, size of clusters, and uh, their composition of a different uh, number of uh, uh, such a molecule uh, formula. So they have uh, such a, such a behavior. So we can find uh, only reasonable uh, combination of uh, molecules uh, with different geometry structures. They can come to the, the growing uh, interface to form a crystal growth. Um, also, we have for the, uh, during the nucleation and the crystal growth process, uh, we can find uh, some uh, fragments and also uh, the, the bonding uh, modes change. So they give us some uh, important uh, or spectroscopy uh, uh, signals to identify such a dihydrogen phosphate group. Uh, they have uh, symmetry change from uh, C to V to S4. And also for the uh, ammonium, uh, ammonium ion, and also it has a symmetry change uh, from a nucleation to a crystal growth from a TD to S4. So such changes we can find the uh, integration uh, molecule uh, aggregation si uh, signals. Uh, see, this, this is a Raman shift, uh, the typical uh, peaks. And uh, with the time increasing, such an intensity or uh, peak shift, peak location uh, have, have uh, different uh, behaviors. So they can help us to identify from C to V to S4. So the, these changes are related to such a symmetry change. And also for with the time increasing, and we also can find such a uh, symmetry change related to the water removing and also uh, the uh, approaching of uh, such a uh, uh, dihydrogen di di phosphate uh, uh, group come together to, to form uh, the big scale uh, cluster. So from uh, CRV to S4, and we can find uh, the such a structure quite, quite close to the crystal structure. That means uh, the crystal growth starts, the nucleation stage uh, finished. Uh, also, we uh, different uh, wave numbers, and uh, we can we can find uh, the uh, if we take a look uh, of uh, ammonium and ions uh, from a TD to S4 changes, and uh, also the uh, the aggregation of more more molecules they come together to form uh, the symmetry of a crystal state. Uh, so, from a spectroscopy and also. Uh, Infrared spectroscopy can help us to, to use the uh, peak shift or peak uh, disappear, uh, can help us to find the accretion state, accretion state, aggregation state, nucleation state, and also crystal state. 
So such a state can help us to understand the different uh, uh, stage uh, from the new nutrition to the crystal growth. It can give us a lot of information to simulate the hybrid ions, aggregation, nucleation, and also crystal growth. Uh, for us to understand uh, what's going on during crystal growth. So if we use a spectroscopy, particularly in situ spectroscopy, uh, we, uh, we can find uh, some uh, massive scale structure. So such a structure are observable, observable by a spectral uh, peak shift or peak uh, disappear. And also for the chemical bonding mode, uh, it's related to the symmetry of, uh, of uh, semi, particular symmetry changes during the whole crystallization process. And also such information help us to, uh, pro to create a chemical bonding theory of a single crystal growth. So, and also we can, uh, apply, to, we can apply such, a, uh, such a knowledge to the crystal growth, like a fast growth of larger single crystal, and also single crystal fibers. Uh, so, in our case, it's a typical multi-scale system from the molecules or ions to materials. They are at different levels. So in this case, and how to deal with such a system, they are not at the same level. If, if we want to solve this problem, we select a mesoscale. So mesoscale is in uh, between the scale one and the scale two. So we select uh, the growing interface. So for such an interface, and we can use the chemical bonding knowledge to understand uh, what's going on here, particularly for the chemical bonding of uh, different uh, aggregation. And uh, they can help us to have a lot of information about the thermodynamic and kinetic uh, parameters. So we can, have, uh, we can have bigger single crystal curves. So for the crystallization, our view of point uh, is a microscopic view. Uh, cations or atoms come together or molecules come together to form uh, uh, different kind of clusters. And such cluster can form uh, different uh, uh, stacking, uh, stacking of uh, such uh, aggregation. And uh, very luckily, we can find uh, some uh, spectroscopic signals and uh, such a signal can give us the symmetry of such a uh, stacking or such a packing. So they can help us to understand uh, the uh, microscopic uh, behavior during the nucleation and the uh, crystal growth. So these pieces are all related to nucleation and also the following, the crystal growth. So during the crystal growth, the solution composition or solution structure has a very complicated uh, microscopic uh, be features. They have uh, different uh, kind of uh, clusters. So the clusters are with different uh, compositions, uh, also different geometries. Uh, for, the, for the growing interface, they have a symmetry selection. Only reasonable, only possible uh, architecture can come to the growing interface and to form a crystal growth. And also such a, such a stacking, such a packing of uh, a reasonable architecture, reasonable geometry, uh, geometries and that form uh, the anisotropic growth of a single crystal. So we can see they have a different uh, growth direction and different growth surface, different architecture. Uh, so from the viewpoint of uh, the, of the, the uh, chemical bonding to understand the single crystal growth, particular for the interface, we may use a symmetry chain uh, of, uh, of uh, the different groups or different clusters and also their uh, interactions uh, forming chemical bond and we can help us to, to grow single crystal or to understand it from uh, to understand the initial state to final state. For example, like uh, Yag, this is a typical laser single crystal. Um, from uh, the uh, ions, uh, different ions like uh, EPM, aluminum, and also oxygen. So they come together to form a different, uh, like a dimer, 
uh, trimer or hexamer, they are the possible uh, architecture from the viewpoint of chemical bonding mode. Such a mode will form the information, stacking information uh, at the growing interface. If we tune the possible uh, situation for this chemical bonding mode, and they can help us to grow a single crystal, particular for the faster growth of single crystal. So we create uh, the chemical bonding theory of a single crystal based on the, the above analysis, the above information. And we think uh, for the growing system, we have uh, free ions, aggregations, and the crystal phase. And we particularly understand uh, the interface, particularly the chemical bonding uh, at the interface. So we can finally have, have uh, such an equation. Such an equation very useful for us to get uh, the crystal growth, particular faster single crystal growth. And also we can understand the such equation um, by using different mathematic uh, formula equations to have a final such uh, uh, formulas together. Our single crystal, we call it the chemical bonding theory of single crystal growth. Like a physical view, we think it's a chemical potential decrease system. And also, uh, we form uh, the chemical view. It's a kind of a chemical reaction at, on the interface. So we, we can use uh, different uh, chemical reaction system to understand it. And also from the chemical engineering viewpoint, like a mass transfer of a growth uh, unit to the growth stage like this, and we can use such a formula to finally have such an equation. Uh, anyway, we can understand uh, this this uh, mechanism, this theory from a different view or point. Uh, for, the, for each material, they have uh, a fixed growth shape. We call it a thermodynamic uh, study. It's a thermodynamic uh, shape. Uh, because each, uh, each uh, material, they have uh, different uh, chemical architecture, chemical bonding architecture if we analyze the crystallographic structure. And finally, by using chemical bonding theory of a single crystal, we can simulate a fixed thermodynamic shift. And for, for our growth, often we use a kinetical control of our growth. That means we can select a different growth direction. And finally, we can tune the, the, side, the, uh, the side growth system, the side growth uh, parameters to, to match the pulling growth, pulling direction, and also uh, the uh, the radio uh, growth system. So we, anyway, it's a complex uh, problem uh, for the pulling direction, different pulling direction. We need to deal with different uh, uh, side phase, and uh, that means different uh, energy state. So we have uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, simulation work in this case. So for the thermodynamic, like Yaga, if we put in uh, along this such a uh, such direction, and we need to deal with such a uh, such a growth phase, uh, we we use uh, kinetic uh, parameters to have a fast growth, and we need to optimize the ratio between uh, putting putting rate and also set growth rate. That means a lot of uh, such a growth direction. And the growth rate uh, is also key, but uh, the ratio is uh, is the important uh, key for us to have to realize the faster growth. Uh, it's it's a some dynamic uh, parameter, but a very important key for us to have a kinetic one. That's a limit for us to have the faster growth of a single crystal by kinetic control. So in this way, we use a multi-scale growth. Uh, philosophy to understand the single crystal, particularly for a very important uh, rare single crystal, like a scintillator. Uh, we call it a uh, serum adopt uh, LYSO single crystal. It's a silicate uh, uh, silicate, uh, single crystal. Uh, it's a scintillator, particularly for ma medical imaging, image uh, taking. So it's uh, for medical application. And also for Yaga single crystal, serious single crystal is for laser application. And for the, for the work, uh, we grow uh, different uh, fibers 
of a Yaga single crystal with uh, with a different uh, uh, rare stopped, we can we can tune their wavelengths. So that means we can have a different uh, kind of application for such fibers. So in our laboratory, we can provide uh, such a commercial commercializable products like a bigger size single crystal. And also we we can uh, uh, we can control the material state at the nucleation state. Uh, we, uh, we also see it's a nucleation control. Uh, for example, for colloidal electrode materials, uh, we also call it ions uh, materials. That means for uh, without crystal growth, only nucleation state we stop uh, such a system to expand. So we can we can make each ions to play important role. So this is the fundamental interface, interfacial uh, capacitance for the energy storage, particular chemical energy storage. It's a typical multi-scale system, uh, particular for the diffusion uh, location uh, around the uh, electrode. Uh, so in this case, uh, it's an uh, analytical uh, level, uh, very, uh, very necessary. So for the water molecule, also solvent, also uh, active ions, they, they form a, a complex system. So in this case, we create a colloid uh, supercapacitor electrode materials. In this case, ions are materials. Uh, normally for active ions, they are so free, they are very easy to diffuse, but uh, very easy to lose. Uh, but for the solid materials, for the crystal materials, with the crystal structure for solid materials, they have confined active ions. Uh, so in this case, some of them are, cannot play their role during the chemical reactions. So in our case, we combine uh, such, a, such a free ions, and also together with the, the solid materials, we call it a colloidal state. So for colloidal state, we use a commercialized, uh, commercial inorganic salt by using in situ co-precipitation and also in situ activation on the electrode field. You can have uh, electrode uh, active and colloids. Such clothes are very, uh, are very useful. They show a very good uh, electro chemical uh, performance. <clears throat> for example, we, we show it uh, on the, the microscopy. Uh, images, we can see uh, the uh, very uh, small aggregation. And such aggregation uh, on the carbon clothes, the carbon fibers, uh, they are stacking uh, uh, independent. So they can play a very, uh, very active uh, chemical, electrochemical reaction. And uh, we can find that they have very high uh, energy state, uh, energy density. So often for a capacitor, <clears throat> they have a low energy station, uh, energy state, energy density. But uh, for, our, for our case, we call it a supercapacitor. Capacitor. That means it combines a uh, supercapacitor and also a battery. So it combines very quick um, charge and discharge and also high energy density. And uh, also because we can, we can paste it on the carbon clothes, so we can fabricate uh, flexible supercapacitor, so very useful. Also, we can find that they have very, uh, very good performance if we combine with, uh, uh, if we compare them with the available literatures, and we can find our work show very perfect uh, performance. And also for the flex, uh, flexible supercapacitor, uh, it's quite useful for practical applications, uh, very, very useful for, for further applications. Uh, to conclude my talk, my group uh, focus on creating novel functional materials. Particularly, we uh, our group we we are interested in inorganic material science and engineering. Uh, our group members are interested in experiments and theory. Uh, particularly for the in individual materials components, we uh, we sometimes we are. Uh, we have the aim to where use the rare earth elements because in China we have a lot of such uh, elements. Uh, because if we want to where use our materials, uh, interface design and optimization are very important. In our case, during crystallization, we have interface control uh, of uh, our crystallization process. 
uh, our group we produce uh, optical single crystal lug size high quality for this application for medical applications. Uh, finally, I want to say thanks to my students, colleagues, and collaborators to say thanks to um, SFC and also Chinese Academy of Science, Chongqing Institute of Applied Chemistry, and also uh, the uh, uh, Shandong University. Thank you very much, Mr. Chang.